Yeah, yeah. I love it. You got all these pictures of whiteboards. If somebody steals my phone, you're like, what the hell's up with this guy? <laughs> Is that just for your videos? No, no, it's oh, my yeah. phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, nowadays, you don't have to have a phone and a camera. True. You just have your personal computer with you all the time. Uh, okay, so where are we at? Um, can you do... So I'm still, um, 50 and 70 on 6-2? 50? Is it? 50. I just want to see if I got it right. 50. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 50. 50 and 70. All right, so let's, now that we've got a few factoring forms under our belt, we still have to talk about some more, but uh, we know we always try what first? Always. What do we always try? GCF. So you always try that. Just because if it's, it, it might be the only thing that works and it might make the what's left over easier, right? But does this have any GCF? No. They all don't have anything each other has, so that there's no GCF. The next thing is you look at the number of terms. If there's four terms, you try to group. I like to do the first two, last two. Uh, if there's three terms, you hope to God this is a one, and it is, because then it's a little easier, right? Because the only way, if this was a six, I really want you to understand, we're going to get into this today. If this was a six, the neat thing is this would still work, but that would throw me off, because then it could be 2B and 3B, or 6B and B, or 3B and 2B the other way around. You know, there's a lot of different ways you could break it up, and we got to develop a way to do it so it doesn't take us all day, right? And we will do that today. Uh, but thank God this is a one. So I know the only way to break B squared up is B and B. So then the whole thing boils down to, well, what numbers make this work? And I could, you know, 12 and 1 would make that work, right? 3 and 4. But, of course, what, what makes the middle term work also? So what do I need? I need two numbers that do what? Make 12. Multiply to be 12. Negative 12. Yeah. Negative 43. And add to be negative 1. Yeah. So 12 is a small number. You can make it 6 and 2 would make 4. No good. Right? 12 and 1 would make 11. Right? Because one of them's got to be negative. 3 and 4. Good. 3 and 4. Which one's negative? Negative 4. All right. Good. Let me stop there for a second. So one way to do it is to write several factors of the last number and check each one to see if they also add to be what they're supposed to be. Yeah, I just think it's a fact of the B that it is supposed to be a one, a negative one, right? No, 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 no. Oh, here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's I always just, an understood okay. one there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's why I was like, um, what is that supposed to add up to be? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that we chose to not write the one, but at the same time, thank God, because it's saving us over our lifetime a lot of ink or graphite. Lead. What was the other question? 70? 70. It just has um, multiple x. So this is awesome. This is our... This is the taking out the GCF first? Uh, I'm going to answer the question in a weird way. It's always taking out the GCF first. It's just that there is no GCF. So you always... This is another reason why you always try GCF first. Because if you try to start doing this, one thing is this is not a one. So you might think you have to use the process we're going to talk about today. But can I make this a one by doing what? Taking out negative four. Thank God negative four goes into everybody. So I can force this to be a one. But what else can I take out? Thank you. A Y. A Y. I like it. Let me see if you guys get what I'm about to say. If the, if the powers were like this... I can't do this. What's the first thing I do here? What did I do to this first? Broke it in half. So whatever this power is, this power has to be half of it. Because the first thing I do is break that guy in half, right? It's two half of three. Shit. Can you break Y cubed in half? No. Shit. So thankfully they all have a Y. All right, I like it. So that's why the first step you do is GCF. 
So maybe it's the only thing you do, or it makes what's left over easier to do. Right? So I can take a negative 4 and a y. a y. Since I'm taking a negative out, what's going to happen? <laughs> All the signs are going to change. Right? So this is now what? Y, 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 y squared. Minus Five y Good. Plus eight. Minus five y. I had two. I took one. Plus eight. Eight. I like it because I took the y out. But we stopped it for a second. How do you always check a GCF step? How do you check that? Yeah, just just read it back in. Make sure you get back to there. Every every time you rewrite this, you're saying this is the same as that. This is the same as that. This is the same as that. So how do you check? Make sure it's the same as that, right? Make sure that when you multiply it through, you get that. So now I can focus on this. Sorry, is this 6, 2? Yes, 6, 2. Yep. Oh, yeah, uh, 6, 2, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, do, what would I need? And this is where students go a little insane. But don't. This is easy. What do I need to have happen? Two numbers that do what? Multiply to 8, multiply to eight to add to negative 5. 8, well, I got 1 and 8, that ain't going to work. 2 and 4, that ain't going to work. That's it. So that's it? You're done. It's like me saying factor 17. You're like, I'm done. The minute you said it, I was done. Because I can't factor 17, right? Does that make sense? So, so I would call this piece of the problem is prime. Because I can't factor it, right? It should make sense. I gotta find numbers that multiply to this and add to this. So how hard is it for that not to work? Not very hard at all. So if I make that a 13, I'm screwed. So on the one hand, you might say, well, why do we learn factoring? Because it sounds like it's never gonna work. It's gotta be exact, but it, it happens very often in math that it does work more often than you might think. All right? Yes. Uh, six point uh, one seventy-two. At some state, I do not understand it. Where? Sorry. Uh, six point one seventy-two. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Things get weird when you have a GCF in a grouping problem. With the minus, it's the, 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 the problem. Okay. All right, I'm going to do this problem the way that most students do this problem. And I'm going to show you where most students stop and show you why that's not the place to stop. All right. Because uh, it's very easy to forget what you should always try first. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to forget. So how many terms are there? Four. 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 So what method do I use? Grouping. Grouping. I like it. Oh, well, too bad for me. So if I group these, and, and it's a, uh, if you draw the parentheses in, that leads to mistakes. So I try desperately. Just, you're not actually drawing. You don't. Need, there's no need to draw parentheses in. Uh, I really want it to make sense. If I if I have negative three minus four and I draw parentheses in, is that the same thing? No, because now it's three minus four with a negative in front. So I've changed it. So no need to put parentheses in there. Just kind of underline them so your eyes know where to look. So in this first group, what comes out? But uh, sorry, Mr. Jeff. Before this, we we make it uh, simply. Uh, simply. Okay. So I said I was skipping a step. What step did uh, I skip? Uh, the first one to take uh, y. Yes, because they all have something, one. right? Yeah. But I'm showing you right now. Okay. So yesterday we did one where I did take it out first. Mm -hmm. So I figure today I'll show you what happens when I don't. Okay. So how many y's could I take out? Three. Uh, three. Now keep that in no three. Oh, three. Three. Okay. Keep that in mind. Let's just keep going. Keep that in mind. Uh, what comes out in here? Five. 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 Uh, plus three. three. Now, yeah. I really want this to make sense. How good do we feel about what we just did? Pretty damn good. That was easy, right? That was easy. So I know this has got to be here, right? I know it because that's the only way I can do the next step. So how do I make this negative 2y to the fourth become just a y? What do I take out? Negative 2y. I mean, 
Yep. You gotta get the negative two out of there. And I gotta take three y's away. And of course, thankfully, I can. Right? So it's gonna work, that's gotta happen. So sure enough, when I take that out, of course, I make a y like I wanted to. Is that cool? Because it's negative, now it's positive, and I only got one y left. Uh, this plus is three. 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 Because negative six divided by negative two is positive three, and I, I took all three y's away. And sure enough, what's true here? Same. They're the same. If they're not the same, go back, you made a mistake, or it's an evil prime problem, maybe. Or, or maybe you have to switch two of the terms so it'll work. Yes? But, um, how did you get that by three? Because I would think it... Where am I at? Uh, Here? The second part. The second part. Here? Yeah. Uh, so what's... three y's, right? Here? Or, yeah. Or okay. So what can come out of both of these? How many y's can I take out of both of them? Three. Three. That's how I got three. I'm taking this out. So how many can I take out? Three Y's. So I put Y cubed here. I'm taking three Y's out. Then you have one left over. And then what can come out of the numbers? Negative two. So if I had Y cubed plus Y to the fourth, how many Y's can I take out? Three. Three. So I put a Y cubed in front, and then I write what's left. So that's all I'm doing here. But isn't there only one left? Or, I mean, on top of you took out three, what is two? Sure, there's one Y left right there. So they had four y's in this first term, right? I, I wrote kind of big here, so my terms are kind of offset here. This is part of that thing I told you about moving that over. But when you're doing this kind of problem, it's hard to do that. But the result of what's left here goes here in the first spot. So I, the negative 2 is gone. I had four y's. I took three, so I have one left. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. I, all three y's were taken. Cool. All right. So I think it's just because it was offset. My yeah. problem, why we got uh, uh, plus three here? This is my problem. What did so I we, take out? So Yeah, so we need to uh, divide uh, minus six. Uh, okay, I got it. Cool, because when I take a negative out, all the signs change. It's that simple. Okay. And if you make a mistake, the problem tells you you yeah, made a mistake. Know, it's, you, know. you gotta love that. When the math goes says, hey, you made a mistake, you're like, Oh, math, you're not so bad, after all. <laughs> At least for right now. You are my Yeah. <laughs> I put it, but I didn't understand why. So I, I got okay. it now. And of course, the, the last step, which isn't really the last step, what comes out? What do they both have? Uh, y plus 3. And what's left? Uh, y5. 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 Minus 2y minus two two y cubed. Can you do anything more with this? No. no. Can you do anything more with that? Yes. Yes. Remember those three Y's that you should have taken out first, which is, yeah. I didn't, but that doesn't mean you don't. You could. Well, guess what? They're going to come out now. Who cares, right? This is then you just put them front? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I can take three Y's out. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. I'm going to take them all the way out front because that's where they make sense. Times this, and then what's left when I, in here when I take three Y's out? Y squared that's a minus three two. Exactly. I had five Y's that took three, so I got two. I had three Y's that took them all, so I got none. Mm -hmm. So you can either take the Y cubed out first, or, so or you can take the Y cubed out last. Right? The math doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. Normally, if it's one a monomial, we put it first. It's kind of like a coefficient-looking dude. But these guys, yeah. Five, six? Fifteen. So you, you got the right answer? Yeah. And you just want to see what now? I want to see how you would do it. Okay. All right. Guys, help me out. How do I? What's the first step? Split it. Cool. Because yes. y is being divided by three y cubed, and six y squared is being divided by three y cubed. Oh, five point six. Right. This is the problem you're talking about. So you need to do long division. Hell no. What's the only time I have to do long division? Three. Yeah, don't do that. That's crazy. What's the only time you do long division when the bottom has more than one term? If the bottom is a single term, 
splitting it up makes allows me to reduce it. Because I know about to put it three, fly three up and under everything. But if I, the minute I do this, oh shit, now I got to do long division. Yeah. Yeah. But thankfully that wasn't there. It's just one term so I can split it up. Long division would work. It just looks a lot worse. What would the negative one there be? No, if it was there. Why would that make it harder? Because then the bottom would have two terms. Uh, yeah. So if the bottom is one term, this way. So a parentheses is a second term. No, 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 no. If the problem would have been this. Oh, minus one. Then I would have had to do long division, okay. yeah. I thought that was an extra one. Cool. Sorry, okay. yeah. That's all right. And then just to finish this out, what happens here? Uh, two Y, two on the bottom. Good. And what's on the top? Wait, wait, what did you say? 3y2? 3y2, okay. One on the top. Because one y dies, mm -hmm. y divided by y is one. Uh, two uh, two uh, over y. Uh, Six divided by three is two. y squared over y cubed is one y left on the bottom after they battle it out. That's, 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 the problem. that's it? Yeah, cool. And I really want you to see, if I wanted to go back, if I wanted to combine these, I would have to make like denominators. See, that would be this step. Look, now they have the same denominator, don't they? and then I would add them together. So, of course, math can always go both ways. This is breaking it up, and, and to put it together, I would make an LCD and put it together. So you can see both ways up there. And yes, that is in your future going this way. Not yet. Yeah. So that's the section process. Um, Which one? Twenty-four. So twenty-four is not long division because the bottom has how many terms? One. If you force a single term bottom to be long division, it just doesn't quite work right. It looks horrible. Yeah. There's no 95, so you mean? Reminder, if I had like 2 times 10 to the negative 7 times uh, 4.1 times 10 to the 5th, how do you do that? Okay, good. You would add the exponent, and then you would do what here? Yeah, so 8.2 times 10 to the? Minus 2. Negative 2. Uh, why am I adding powers? Because I'm multiplying. I like it. You guys understand what I'm, why I'm saying this? Because now that's easy, relatively. We'll see if you agree. So what do I do with 6.3 and 2? Divide. Divide. Watch, 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 watch. If I add a zero, did I change the number? No. No, but now it's real easy to cut it in half. 3.15. Now, please, and please realize that's not an x, right? That's a times. That's the only time we use the times symbol like this, as an x. Now what happens, signs of notation looks like this, with all the tens on top. So, let me see you guys get what I'm trying to say. These three tens want to go up top anyway, but even if it wouldn't have been negative, I would have forced it up. Why? Because I know at the end I want all my tens on the top, that's why. But thankfully they want to go up, so if they go up, what does it become? Five. Time, yeah, times Plus. 10 to the third. So now how many tens do I have? Five. Five. Cool. Okay. So you divide, and then you subtract exponents, which I would just force that up top. Just like here, what do you do? You multiply, and then you add exponents. That's what you do. So you do the exact same thing for division, except you divide and you subtract exponents. Oh. 
but that wouldn't be a negative one. No, definitely not. Because it isn't, if it was 10 squared times 10 to the negative 3, that would be a negative 1. But this is 10 squared oh, okay. divided so by. The, the entire part. Got it. Sorry. So I got to throw this up, which makes this exponent become positive in this case. I have a question. Is it wrong if I said uh, 6.3 by 10 squared? Uh, that means uh, 630. Over. Yes, it's wrong it a little wrong? bit because I they, I need you to work with the scientific notation. That's the new thing. I know we know how to divide mm -hmm. numbers. I want you to divide things in scientific notation. That's the new thing we're learning. Okay. Yeah. So, I didn't do it right when I did 6.3 times 10 to the over 2. Oh, you just had one more step to go. Just uh, divide the 2 into the number. No, no, no. Uh, just divide 6.3 by 2. So you, you got 6.3 over 2 times 10 to the 5th? Yeah. All right, well, just do that. Do, do this. Divide 6.3 by 2. And then would I also have to divide 10 to the 5th by 2? No, no. Uh, you ready? Oh, because, because there's two terms. There's only one term here. It's all connected with multiplication. So if I, if I had 7x over 7, what happens? 7, 7x. 7x seven cancel. Wait, doesn't the x have to be divided by 7 also? No, because it's not separate. It's all one term. So I did divide 7x by 7. Right? If I had 7 plus x over 7, oh shit, now what do I got to do? I got two terms. They each are divided by 7. So I got to break them up. So my stuff here is, is not connected with plus or minus, it's connected with multiplication. So I don't have to split it up because there's not two terms or something to split it up to. So here I could write this as 7 over 7 plus x over 7 because there's two terms that each have to be divided by 7. When I only have one term, there's nothing to split up. There's only one term. So because these terms because these terms are connected with the because they're connected with multiplication. And they are like numbers So so if you divide this also by two, what's the total number that's on the bottom? Four. Well, there's not a four on the bottom. Do you see? There's only one two, so by two. there's only one two. So there, I can't put two twos because there's only one of them. favorite sound. Alright, alright. So let's get into some new stuff. So is the answer 350,000? Yeah, the next section say... Oh yeah, so this one says write it in standard form, so then you would take this and move it how many times? Five. Yeah, one, two, and then three zeros. Yeah, good. 315,000. So one section says leave it in scientific notation, and the other one says standard form, which really just means normal number form. Right. This is not my final form. Another track of also good. Alright, so let's get into some new stuff. If there's no other questions. Yes? Oh, alright. Uh... Yeah, that's the right answer. Because they give you a distance, and they give you a speed. And how are distance and speed, which is a rate, how are they related? Distance equals rate times time. And then they ask you, in part B, they say, how long would it take? So then to get time, you would divide by the rate. So I want to take the distance they give me, which you wrote in scientific notation part A. 24 times 10 to the fourth. And then divide it by the time that they give me in part B. I divide it. And so it's just like a problem like we just did. It's the division of two scientific notation deals. Yeah. So it does come out to be six. Yeah. Six hours. Moon is far away. Okay. Here we go. 
I, I was going to print that sheet out for you, but it's very colorful, and the colors are part of what makes it easy to read. And I have run out of coloring, so I've got to wait for them to order some coloring. But it's too early, maybe, still to give you that handout. Uh, so what do we know so far? We always try what first? GCF. So this is the factoring steps. We always try GCF no matter what. Then I look at the number of terms. Four terms or more actually would tell me to do what? Group it. Three terms. Let me, let me throw a, a general thing at you. Let me see what you think. It's going to be in the form like this. Cool. And when A is 1, so this has got two parts to it. If A is 1, it's relatively easy. Alright, just a little review of what we've done so far. So for example, if I had x squared minus 6x uh, uh, minus 27. There you go, Jeff. It's got a 1 out front, so this is relatively easy because there's only one way to do x squared. The minute this is not a 1, there's multiple ways to do it. Oh shit. So x squared has got to be x times x. And what numbers are going to work here? 9 and 3, and which one's negative? The 9. The bigger one's got to be negative. No. Why is the bigger one negative here? Because it's got to add to be a negative number, right? So how would I factor x squared? So that's done. How would I factor x squared plus 6x minus 27? Minus 3 will be plus 9 minus 3. The bigger one's positive now, so that when you add them, it ends up positive. So it's not more to remember, it's the problem helping you figure things out. Okay, let me stop there for a second. So this is what we've done so far. This is where I need you to get comfortable soon with all this. Okay. All right. And the best way to do that is <coughs> do the homework. Yes, sure. So if you're not done with five, speed up. Okay. Uh, so here's new stuff. What if A is not 1? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's the appropriate one. So I'm desperately going to try to show you some examples to figure out why the process we use works. And the more you understand why it works, the less you have to memorize it because it just makes sense. Um, so where would something come from that would have A not 1? I would need to start with something that's got numbers here, right? Yes. Not just one and one, because then I'm going to end up with one. So if I start, how do we always kind of get motivation for vectoring? Start with the answer and work it out to get an idea of what's going on. So if I started with this, oh yeah, that's yummy. I'm going to end up with something that looks like this, where A is not one. Is that, is that cool? Mm -hmm. So where did that come from? I, I just made it up just to kind of look at it to see what it does. Isn't that how we figured out this? Sure. We did a bunch of these and we said, oh, look, I can see the pattern. They always multiply to be the last and add to be the middle. There you go, that's where we got the process from. Okay. I got a lot of pens and they don't work. Uh, so what do I get when I foil this out? Uh, eight, six, two. Eight, six, Who? Six, what? Six, What's happening? Eight, 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 six, six, uh, yeah, eight, six plus no, six, eight, 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 and then, of course, what can we do? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We're not factoring. We're, we're trying to figure out how factoring works. We're doing this straight up multiplying. So the next thing I can do is combine like terms. All right. So 2x times 4x is here. 2x times 5 is next. I'm just foiling here. I right? just distributing. Cool. I like it. And why am I doing this? Because factoring is the reverse of this. So to get an idea of how to work something, 
I do the reverse of what I'm trying to do and see if I can see any patterns. Exactly like we did to figure this out. Yeah. You know you said foil, you don't like foil? So I, I will say foil because most students know foil. And you know the process, I mean, but it's really distribution. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, yeah, I, I always think that if you learn FOIL, it messes you up a little bit because the minute I add more terms here, you think it's something else and it's the same thing. You just got to distribute it to more. So I don't like things that make it seem like this is special. No, it ain't. You, you just distribute it. four term situation will always go for your last. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, exactly. But the minute I put more terms in there, that's screwed. Uh, so what do I get here? Negative 2 Negative 2x. Minus. Now, this came out, I just made this up out of nowhere, and it came out almost in a bad way, but let's see if you guys catch on this. Uh, remember, why did we put a 3 and a negative 9 here? Because together they make Six. negative 27, right? Negative 27. I'm getting there. So, so does negative 3 and 5, there, that makes the negative 15, right? Right. Now, what is negative 3? Now, no, the, the 6, no, yeah, the, the negative 6 is negative 9 plus 3, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Is negative 3 plus 5 no. negative 2? No. no. Oh, shit. So why did that happen? Because the middle term used to come from just, uh, just this number and this number, right? So what's there now that screws me up are these two freaking numbers, right? 